Hi guys, it's Taylor again. A couple weeks ago, I made a video of me reacting to my MCAT score. And to be honest, I was not expecting as many people to view it as you guys did. And today as a follow-up, I decided that I'd be talking about how I studied for the MCAT, including the resources that I used and the timeline. If you didn't see my last video where I did react to my MCAT score, um, the score that I wanted wasn't quite what I was aiming for, but it also wasn't horrible and after a lot of discussion with a lot of different people, I decided that I was going to go ahead and keep my score. I think I was a little bit disappointed when I saw it, but I think thinking about it now, I am very proud that I was able to do that um, while being a full-time student. I know lots of full-time students study and get much higher scores than I did, but I still feel like for me and the amount of mental energy that I had at the end of the day that this was um, great and I feel like the rest of my application is great. So for all the people who wanted to know if I was planning to retake it or if I was planning to continue, I am planning to continue. So if you are interested in seeing what I did, keep watching. For the resources, I'll just list them out in no particular order. I did the AAMC MCAT prep material, Kaplan 2021-2022 MCAT books and online portal, Khan Academy, Jack Weston, Cars Passages, Blueprint, Diagnostic Exam, Full Length One, and the flashcards. I had a spreadsheet and notebook to keep track of all my progress. MCAT podcast by Dr. Ray, my favorite. And classes, obviously, from undergrad. So in total, I spent about this much. I'll put it somewhere on the screen. Um, the MCAT is definitely very pricey and that was one of my main concerns. Reflecting on it now, I think I definitely could have spent a little bit more to maybe have a little bit more practice material, but I feel like I did a pretty good job of not spending a whole lot on it. All right, so that was everything that I used, um, but now I'm gonna go into how I used it because I definitely used some more than others and some I barely touched. So timeline. So the original plan was actually very different from what I ended up doing after I started studying. And by the time I had gotten the rhythm, I'd already wasted so much time trying different resources that I ended up not liking and ended up getting rid of entirely. The actual bulk of my timeline um, started with the blueprint diagnostic exam. I think I took this in June of 2021, and I ended up scoring a 498. I'll put the breakdown up on the screen somewhere. And I felt like this was pretty encouraging. I know this isn't like a great score and I knew that I had a long way to go, but I felt like it was close enough to a 500 that it propelled me to feel good about studying. So at this time, I knew that I was planning on taking my MCAT in January of 2022. So my plan was to do content review over the summer, finish it, and to do practice during the school year when I knew I was gonna be a little bit more busy um, and hopefully have that equal me knowing how to take the MCAT by the end of it. So that's exactly what I started doing. I started to try to do content review just because I felt like was what everyone else said that they were going to do. And I tried out a couple different things and I think the thing that stuck best for my content review phase was to do Kaplan chapters from the books. I would read a chapter, take detailed notes on it, and then I would continually do that. Oh, oh I remember the thing that I wanted to say. I hadn't taken biochem and two thirds of physics at this point in time. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know what to say about it other than I knew that I was going to have to self-study that or wait until the semester came. Okay, that was a tangent. Back to Kaplan. Um, so after doing this for about three months, I realized that I didn't really retain as much information as I wanted to when I did it that way. This is probably an unpopular opinion, but I felt like content review was the most overrated part of my MCAT studying. Because again, I was just reading things that I already had learned in my classes, but trying to take detailed notes on the things that I probably didn't need to know. So I ended up with a lot of pages in my notebook filled front to back with um, just handwritten notes. So yeah, by the time school came, I was about 70% done with content review, which was definitely far behind what I had expected. I was expecting to be 100% done by this point in time. I had taken two more practice exams, both from Kaplan, and I'd scored a 504 and a 501 on them. So definitely better than the diagnostic, but I think that was a product of me knowing how to take the exams and knowing what they looked like rather than me having learned that much more. Um, and I still had a long way to go. I was not settling for a 504, but to be honest, once school um, started back up, my studying slowed down a lot, like embarrassingly a lot. I 
was taking biochem, physics, um, a molecular biology class that I was having a really hard time with, and a classics class, which I thought was gonna be easy, but it actually wasn't. So I had a lot on my plate and I didn't get to do as much studying as I wanted to. And so really I did not end up doing the other 30% of my content review. A month or two went by like this and I was starting to panic because my MCAT was coming up and I hadn't really made any progress. Um, of course I did some stuff here and there, but it really wasn't anything substantial. It would maybe be like an hour of cars practice or something on the weekend. Um, and it was at this point that I had a really life-changing conversation with a family friend who happened to be a Princeton Review mentor whenever he went through the process. So I don't know why I didn't talk to him earlier, but he, he kind of gave me advice that really changed the way I viewed MCAT studying. Before that, I felt that MCAT study had to be very structured um, content review and then um, practice and then you take the MCAT, but he said that given the fact that I was a student, I probably wasn't getting as much out of content review as I thought that I was and that it would be more beneficial if I started focusing on practice. And so that's exactly what I did. It was at this point that I took the first full length on Blueprint and I reviewed it using the MCAT podcast by Dr. Ryan Gray that went through every single question with thought processes behind it. And this really helped. I know it was just one test, but it really gave me a perspective on how test writers write their questions and how they expect you to answer them. Because to be honest, I didn't review any of the practice exams I'd taken over the summer from Kaplan. Um, so that was a big step in my um, MCAT progress. I wanted to add that this is how I reviewed my full length exams. Um, I would go through question by question and if I got it right and I understood, then I would mark it as correct and understand just to kind of give me motivation when I looked at the page and saw how many I would get like correct. Um, but if I got it incorrect or I didn't understand because I guessed it and it just happened to be right, then I would put a couple notes as to what I got wrong, um, how it would be corrected, etc, etc. Um, and yeah, I pretty much filled up the book like that. After doing that practice exam, I realized that I was too scared to do practice before I finished my content review because I thought that that was really, really important. But again, I learned most of the content in my classes, so that really wasn't necessary. And also the content that you need to know for the MCAT is not super in depth. So I was focusing on all the wrong things. I was trying to memorize details when that wasn't what was needed of me. I needed to hammer down the basic concepts of each topic and move on. Embarrassingly enough, um, which I feel like is this whole video, but um, I haven't purchased the double AMC content until this point. This is probably like October, November. So I went ahead and did that. I began doing the second banks and all of like the practice problems that weren't the full length exams off of the double AMC stuff. Very, very soon after was final. So again, there was a halt in my MCAT studying and I had to focus for two weeks or so on just my finals. Come winter break, this is when I packed in 10 hours a day. Um, what you typically see of people who study for the MCAT. And my winter break was only two weeks long, so I knew that this was going to be the biggest study period that I was gonna have. During these 10 hours, I made my way through a good amount of the double AM AAMC material. I didn't actually end up finishing it, weirdly enough. And then I did two double AMC full lengths, which I will also put the results of on the screen, one per week. And as you can see, I was starting to make some progress from the last couple times that I had done my um, exam, whether that be because I was starting to get everything more or because the third party exams were deflated, I will not know, but it felt good to see a higher score on the screen. I was also continuing to do the psych social flashcards, um, 50 per day, and towards the end I was doing 100 per day, and then I was also doing cards passages every day. When I got back to school, I had about two and a half weeks of um, time before my exam, so I used this definitely more heavily than I was able to fall quarter, but Again, since I was in school, I wasn't able to fully focus on the MCAT, which was okay and expected for me. Again, I did cars and flashcards every day, and I also added in the physics flashcards because I knew I was gonna have trouble with those. After a week though, I kind of gave up on them because I realized that, I don't know, I just, I 
felt like I couldn't memorize all the physics equations. I felt like it wasn't really worth my time because I could, I could do a lot of the physics questions either off of intuition or off of a few select equations or off of um, unit conversions. So I felt like it wasn't worth my time within the last week and a half to study physics equations. So I kind of gave up on that. I technically had three final practice exams left off of the AANC material and I only got to two of them. And again, I'll put the scores somewhere on the screen. Um, the last one made me feel really amazing before taking my test and I was really praying that I was going to get something hopefully more close to that. Um, didn't end up happening, but that's completely okay. And yeah, that last exam that I took was the weekend and then my exam was on a Thursday. So that was about it before I took my exam. And after I took my exam, I was completely over. Um, I figured that if I had to retake it or something, I would just wait because <laughs> I was so over studying for the MCAT while balancing doing school. So again, that was entirely it. That was how I studied for the MCAT. I know it definitely was not the most robust study schedule. And also please do not take this as uh, what you should do because I did not clearly end up with the score that I wanted, but just take it as a representation of how much time and how many resources I used equated to the score that I got. Yeah, if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. All right, bye.